Didn't make it to the drum shop yesterday, so we'll just give it a full Saturday, see how far we get. I did spend a few nights in my home shop. Made this little workstation for breaking down and assembling snare drums. Plywood, bass, plywood around the edges. Circle recesses drilled out to hold these bowls. That's for all the hardware. EVA floor mat put in there so you don't bang up the bearing edges. And then based on the tedious experience last week, laying out and punching all those hoops, I made this 5 8 offset gauge out of plexi and some poplar. So we'll see if that works. Time to head out. Nope, Jim's back to work on the DROs. Just go. Once you get tired of it, it's three days at the lake. <laughs> Got a bunch of storage containers from Harbor Freight to further our storage needs. Still got some more drilling to go on these hoops for the drum line. These have been done. I need to do the final sand. I'll probably spare you from watching that. This shell that Bill varnished last week ended up bubbling again. Probably gonna scrap it and this rod tension drum needs snares and then I guess some kind of a stand solution which should be interesting we'll see how that comes together back edge of the table, you don't want to get it into the, into the DRO. Jim's working on the second DRO. Got his little shield there. Started drilling his holes he's gonna tap. First one's on and working. Good stuff. But this is good because now I like now I know. So I think I'm just gonna laser cut one. And uh I was like, oh, if I drill, you know, the hole's about that size, I should be able to sight it pretty well. Which I can, but it's it's a little more pain in the ass than I want. I think I'll probably do it the way you did, so the knot holes are just notches, so you just, just register in the notch. Um, and then I think I'll just laser cut on the inside, align straight down. That'd be um, So that'd it's be like, better. it's real visible, you know? You tap those imperial or metric? Uh, imperial. Is that allowed? You're gonna lose your machinist card if you say that. I don't like it. I, I never have. I, I I work with it. I had to work with it all the time for uh, the medical school because so much of the scientific equipment is all metric, and you'll learn it after a while. I just. I don't like having two sets of tools, for Christ's sake. Two sets of taps, two sets of sockets, two, you know, it's like, Jesus. That's why you're supposed to switch to metric. Yeah, I know. It's better. And we thought, uh, well, it is in some ways. Um, yeah, I guess what I'm really complaining about is having two systems. Uh, I hear you. You know, Detroit, 
many years ago went totally metric and, and the word was well if Detroit goes metric surely the rest of the country will follow but they didn't <laughs> they just said Can do attitude, Jim. <laughs> beautiful. Creation. Look at those chips. I forgot the machinists get a hard on over chips. Yeah. <laughs> nice chips. Ooh. Take some good. of them home. That guy's a little squirrely, but he does good work. <laughs> Soaking some cat gut for the tension rod drum. Yep. Beefy old fuel drum. Those slots turned out nice on the mill. Yeah. You think you're gonna have enough room or you're gonna have to widen them out? No, I think they'll be fine. Um, I think that I am definitely going to have to make some kind of pinch bar type situation for the snares on the on the throw off side. Um, I don't think that there's any way that the throw off is going to disengage the snare slot, but there's plenty of room. But I'm thinking if I stretch them across and set them up as though I was just going to like attach them normally, then that'll get them all laid like flat and straight to contour to the, the shape. And then probably with them under tension, I'll I'll make whatever I'm going to do for a pinch bar and then, I don't know, I'll figure something out. Not bad for an afternoon of work. Yeah, man. DROs are a freaking game changer. Every time you leave, Bill tells me secrets about you, so. <laughs> there are many, many. The last one was that you were ma the maker of some boxes to contain anthrax. Yes. <laughs> so he wasn't pulling my leg? No. no actually, it was um, superfluous. It's a, it's a classification, certain kind of lab that is allowed to do. You can't, you can't work with, with tuberculosis, tuberculosis bacteria unless you do this whole federal. All we need is another outbreak of consumption. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right, gentlemen. See you later, man. See ya. Yeah. Twenty snare drum hoops. Four bass drum hoops. Sanded, threw a bit of putty in some spots. My forearms feel like a 14 year old latchkey kid who had a half day at school. <laughs> Bill's throwing a lot of our hardware into these new storage containers his parents brought by. And they got a stack of them. These are the Harbor Freight medium and large help keep us organized. These will get stacked next to all the hardware bins in the office once we build that rack, once we decide what it's gonna be. Bill's next project, he needs to cut some inlay channels into these bass drum hoops, and instead of the butt puckering setup that he used to have, which was a fence and a feather board and some rollers against here, uh, he's making a new jig for the mill cutting a bunch of segments. We're gonna make it modular so you can change the width, kind of like a dado stack. Some uh, a fence on each side. And we're gonna add either rollerblade wheels or casters for the downward pressure. I believe he's cutting those out on the laser. I put some time into organizing these tool chests and made some good progress. 
Got all the drawers sorted, organized, tops cleared out. Even have empty drawers. Probably have to do some shuffling. Do two drawers for wrenches, two for screwdrivers, kind of move things around. But this is good for tonight. So your fixture currently looks like a wooden toaster. Yep. How does it work and what are the changes we already found? Well, it's so the, the hoop will ride in this slot and then we can mill. The, the idea was to put an inlay channel and, and a kick drum hoop, but uh, we could use this same sort of concept to, to make all kinds of stuff, uh, you know, inlay channels or, um, you know, mortises for tambourines or whatever, you know, prototype. So it's got a couple issues. For one thing, the, I made the, the toaster part too tall. So the spindle of the mill isn't gonna clear it. And we were gonna have like uh, some, some wheels riding these tracks to hold the hoop down on the jig, but uh, it, it became clear pretty quickly once we put it together that that's not the move. Uh, we're gonna use lower profile rollers instead, bring this whole thing down a bit. So well, you also pointed out that our initial wheel idea wouldn't work because as soon as you started cutting the channel, your height reference changes. Yeah, I had these cool, uh, like dust chair around wheels and I, I milled them down a bit and uh, thought oh that'll be cool but it won't because you know if they're referencing the, the center of the, the hoop and we're cutting out the center of the hoop that's going to cause problems so uh, so wheels aren't going to do it but rollers probably will it's good first run yeah and the fact that we made it so we can change the width yeah and that was this, pretty clever these can th this is a bunch of layers of quarter inch plywood so you can add them or take them away depending on how wide the hoop is uh, and then take these out and swap them for hoops uh, different diameters so once everything works it, it'll be really versatile and we'll be able to use it for a lot of things but um, still you know this is step one and in addition to that you're almost done with this tension rod drum just yep. got to wait for the snares to dry out and you said you're not Totally sold on the black powder coat hardware, but I actually like it. It's growing on me. I like it. Also, there's this. I hope you didn't bring that out just for that. <laughs> no, I had to take it home anyway. Oh. <laughs> uh, 46 sucks. <laughs>